Good morning. And Kalimera. With it being Valentine's Day tomorrow, I'm sure there are plenty of husbands in our community and certainly around the country that are making arrangements for tomorrow night. Or we would do well to make arrangements for tomorrow night. <laughs> Whether that be finding and making reservations at a nice restaurant for our, to go to with our wife, perhaps finding tickets to something that she's always wanted to go to, maybe a nice gift. Either way, arrangements are being made, as is the case every year around this time. At Hallmark, we might go and f at the Hallmark store, we might find a, a card that says, you know, a lot of different things, but one of the expressions that is often thrown around is, the, finding the key to their heart, the key to her heart, the key to his heart, to our spouse's heart. And that's what we often try to do, right, as, um, as spouses. We try to find the key to the other one's heart. Men, men and women, of course, by the way. <clears throat> and it seems that in life in general, and as fun as it may be to talk about these things during Valentine's Day and in the context of a marriage, even so, in general, there are many situations in life, I would think, that require us or perhaps tempt us to find that right key, that right solution, that right key to the, the answer to the problem or the right thing we're looking for. To go back to the um, <clears throat> context of Valentine's Day in a, um, in a setting between husband and wife, after we do something nice for our spouse, we might often ask ourselves, did I find the key? Did I, did I do good? Did I do the right thing? And I think in life, in general, with relationships, we ask ourselves that. Do we ever, brothers and sisters, struggle to find the key? Do we ever struggle to find the key to a situation perhaps with our spouse, a situation with our children? A situation with a friend or a coworker or a neighbor? Do we as Christians ever finding our, find ourselves asking, what do I have to do to find the key with God? Do we worry about what God thinks of us if we're doing right by Him? Do we ever find the right key to His heart or do so we think? And that is why, of course, Jesus is often asked that question, what must I do? What must I do? The gospel reading that we heard today is from, of course, the gospel of Luke, and it is right in the middle of Jesus' ministry. He's preaching, and he's teaching, and he's talking to people, he's healing, he's doing all kinds of things. And he says a parable today, a famous parable that we probably remember from Sunday school and from many different times in our life. But in this portion, this story that Jesus talks about essentially is an answer to the question, what must I do? What is the key that I need to find and so I can turn and find that answer and open the door? Amidst the very famous parable of the publican and the Pharisee, the tax collector and the Pharisee, about two men sitting in the temple asking themselves, what have I done right or wrong? Have I found the key? Because that's what both of these men were asking. Have I found the key? One saying, well, I do all these things really right. And the other one doesn't even go that far. In the context of a marriage, if we were to recite to our spouse all the things that we think we're doing right, I don't know how far we're going to get. Nor do we go that far with God, as the Pharisee discovered and as Jesus explained in this parable. Because brothers and sisters, the answer, although it seem, may seem very obvious, is one that the publican, the tax collector, had. And that is, of course, humility. Humility is the key. When we ask ourselves, what is the key to finding God's heart or to Him opening the door to us, whatever that might look like in our life, humility is the key. Humility is the answer. Humility is what is going to open that door for us. God doesn't need other things that we do. He doesn't need anything. He's God. We need Him. So He doesn't 
need us to recite all the things that we feel we're doing right, as, again, Jesus emphasized. What does, however, move God's heart, as we hear in the 50th Psalm and in so many other places, what does touch God's heart is just this. It is humility. When Jesus says that this man went down to his house justified, that's not an incorrect translation, but it is also an incomplete one. Justification, of course, is in the context of Judaism in the Jewish faith, as I've mentioned in other sermons, about how a Jew had to ask him or herself, have I done everything right so that I can be right with God once again? Have I been cleansed? Have I been forgiven? Etc., etc. So the word justified from the context of in their, in the mind of the Old Testament, justification, again, is not an incorrect one to say this man went down to his house when he left the temple justified. The word in Greek is the dikeomenos. Dikeosini in Greek is righteousness. And when we talk about when, when in, in the context of New Testament Greek, the dikeomenos, referring to dikeosini, isn't just about justification, although again, it's not incorrect. It's this person was made right. This person was made righteous, in other words, before God. He went down to his house right with God. This man, Jesus says, went down justified because he had humility. St. Philaret or Philaretos of Moscow said, humility is the salt of virtue. So the salt of virtue, in the same way that Jesus talked about salt preserving food and so forth. St. John Maximovich, who of course is a great saint even in the Bay Area, said he called humility a fundamental virtue of being a Christian, a fundamental virtue. And one Orthodox theologian who I read just this morning said, it is better to go back to God repentant after sinning than to go to God puffed up and proud. Humility. Humility is the answer. Humility opens the door to God's heart. He always loves us, of course. That's not to be ever debated. But even so, that special relationship that we think about, especially within the context of romantic love, r love between spouses, what is the key? This is the key to God's heart. Humility. It's humility. It is hard, yes, to be humble, but at the same time, very simple. Very simple. Humility is the key. From this standpoint, we might even say, I don't know, I don't know if I would say this, but do we say God is a cheap date in that way? It's very easy to make God happy. <laughs> humility. Let us always remember this very key. As Jesus teaches us, May we live it also in our life. God bless you. Amen. <clears throat>